guys. All right, so Tom brought the hammer, so I'm going to try to lighten it up a little bit. But um, a few years ago, I spoke at a photography conference, and it was multiple photographers set up in different like rooms, kind of like this one. And I did my speech and thought that I was super inspiring, and everyone found it super helpful. And I walked out, and at the same time our class was getting out, the uh, photographer who spoke in the room next to me she was walking out and all of those attendees and they were all just like crying tears and I was like it was my first time speaking at an event I was like super confident until I walked out and saw that she said something that made them all super emotional and it like touched their hearts and I was like oh my I'm not good at this I'm not an emotional speaker I didn't do what I should have done because none of my people walked out crying like what did I do wrong right and that was kind of my first journey into realizing what kind of business owner I was and what kind of speaker I was. And what I've learned in the last couple of years is I am not the emotional speaker. I am probably not gonna make you guys feel emotionally tugged by what I'm about to say, but I feel like that's helped me in my business. And I hope that being a leader among leaders is a super lonely place to be when you're at the top, near the top, your cup isn't filled as much. Um, and sometimes you just need something like this or someone to kind of bring you back down while supporting you without making you cry. So I hope that you guys, even though you guys all got here by being a really good leader, that you feel something out of what I say today. Maybe that is going to help you with your business or help you lead your leaders uh, going forward the rest of the year. So that's my little intro. This is me. Um, we're going to skip that. Here we go. All right, so we are talking about how do we become a leader among leaders? How do we lead our team in the right way? I'm not gonna say I'm an expert at it, but there comes a point in this job that I have to become comfortable with the fact that I have been a successful leader, and I probably do have something to offer, take it or leave it, uh, but I'm gonna give you guys kind of my little tips and tricks for leading a team the right way with boundaries and with no drama, and also uh, giving yourself and your family a little bit of respect. So I tell people all the time, I'm a lot of things, and not all of it is related to Monate. I am a mom. You know, my kids are at their first Monate event this week, and they're having a ton of fun. Pulled them out of the pool to come here. But I'm a mom. I am a friend. I'm a wife. I'm a sister. I'm still a photographer shooting. And having those healthy boundaries in my business, you know, we speak about 80% your own business, 20% leading your team. Having those healthy boundaries has been super important to me to be able to compartmentalize my life and um, how much I'm giving to people without burnout because being self-employed, you can burn out really easily. One of the things I do that is strange to a lot of people who are self-employed is I only work on my desktop. I have a laptop because I felt like that was the thing I needed because photographers edit on a laptop, people travel with laptops. I work at my desk. I only answer emails at my desk unless it's something I can answer in a one sentence reply. If you've emailed me in the past and you get one sentence, it's probably from my phone, but everything else is on my computer. When my kids are at school, they go to school, they get on the bus around 8.30 in the morning, I sit down at my desk and I work from nine to one every day and then at one o'clock I'm done. Now, I do go back to my computer in the evening after they've gone to bed, and obviously it's summertime, so the schedule's a little crazy right now, but I set office hours and I only work at my computer. This allows me to be super focused in my time. I don't spend a lot of time like scrolling my phone and doing mindless things. I can focus on my work and be done. And also, one thing I learned was if I worked right up until my kids got off the bus, I was a really crappy mom when they got home because I had overworked myself in those six hours. You know, my older two get home at like three. And if I work up until that point, I've just completely burned myself out and I have nothing left to give them. So typically, I work from nine to one and I nap from like one to three every day. And then when my kids get home, I'm refreshed and I'm ready to go. I have a director here, Michelle, who if you guys buy the Strawberry Revolution shirts, that is her, Michelle, wave your hand, there you are. Michelle texted me a couple months ago and said that she was there. She was at burnout big time. She didn't know what to do. She was freaking out. She has straw rev to run. She has her business to run. She has a great, incredible team. 
and I told Michelle, you don't work anymore between one and three. You're done. You do whatever you can until one o'clock, and then you take a two hour, I said, what did I say, a lunch break or a nap time every day for two hours. After she implemented that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, she hit director within, after sitting at MM, MMM for a year, she hit director within a month or two. What? Three weeks, okay? <laughs> And it was what she needed. It was what she needed to like focus her time more, give herself a little bit of time to avoid that burnout. Because when you're burnout, you just don't work as effectively as you should. Um, so office hours. Sit at my desk. Okay. Next thing I do is I constantly reevaluate my approach and what I'm offering my team. One thing that's hard for me is giving my team what I don't think they need. Does anyone understand what that means? One thing that was really hard for me was Zoom calls. I didn't think they needed them. I, you know, I was like, we are talking constantly. We are always in contact. We are doing lives on Facebook or whatever it is. You can call me anytime. And they just kept asking for Zooms. And I was like, all right, we'll do Zooms. Maybe there's something I don't know about a Zoom call. Honestly, I can say this because I'm in a group of directors. I haven't seen a lot of rank advancements. I haven't seen a lot of volume going up. But I have seen they need that camaraderie, they need that time together, they need to be able to see each other. So I, sorry, learned my lesson the hard way and I realized, okay, they thought they needed Zooms for their business, they don't need it for their business, they need it to feel a part of something. So that's why we continue those. So I constantly reevaluate and I'm always asking them, even if I don't feel like it, oh, you can go to the team. Nope. Kids, do this for my family, you guys get it, I know. I felt like you guys needed to look at something other than me, that's why I've got some photos up. Um, <laughs> I'm constantly asking them, even if I'm not in the right mindset, what do you guys need from me? What can I do for you that I have not been doing? Is there, do you need me to do a three-way call with a level four? Do you need me to do, what is it? What is it that you need for me to do? I don't really like asking that question that often because it's tugging me in another direction where I already feel, what, overworked and a little over busy, but I know how important it is for me to offer myself up in that way. Um, and it's, if you're not asking with the intent to follow through, make sure you guys are doing that because sometimes they come to you with something completely off the wall, like, I don't know, I can't even think of an example at this point, but it's, it's a very quick solution to the problem and I wouldn't have known it was an issue if I hadn't asked. So I'm constantly reapproaching my, constantly reevaluating my approach and I am asking my team what they need and deliver. The other thing I do as a leader among leaders is obviously I set the example. Where we set the example highest on my team, which I think speaks to how close we are and how well we work together, is we don't entertain or engage with drama of any kind. And I know that saying that is kind of easy to just stand up here and say it, but it's true and they learn from me. And so I make sure that I implement a zero tolerance policy. So what that means, and a lot of you guys probably do this too, is I approve any questions or comments in our market partner groups, all of them. Um, if someone makes a comment on a post that is off color or dramatic or is not conduct conducive, is not helpful to the conversation that we're having, it's deleted immediately. I will put people in their place very, very quickly. And the one thing that I've tried to kind of reiterate to my team or to new market partners or people who thrive off drama is that you can't run your business off of your emotional response. You know, I know that John Addison was up here earlier and was saying, you know, you run, you know, you have your heart, it's a heart business and it is, but you cannot run a business using your emotions to drive your response. So I have a zero tolerance policy for it. Um, I make sure that everyone feels included. I, you know, if I do team Zooms, I don't care if you're a level 10, 12, I don't even know who you, who you are or where you're from, you're invited. Um, we do a lot of in-person events to make sure that everyone feels included. And I will call someone out real fast. I know that that can seem, I've been, des I've been described as abrasive, which I am. Um, but I feel like I'm also very supportive and sometimes you need a lot of support from your 
director, your leader, and you can get your love somewhere else. You can get your love from your family. You can get your love from your best friend. You can get your love where you need it. But I'm going to make sure that I, I cut it off right there. And I really don't even care if you like it because I've already come to terms with the fact that no matter what I do, I'm going to piss somebody off. So if I can have the least amount of drama possible on my team and just make sure I reiterate to them over and over and over again, your emotions cannot drive your business. And I think that with that mindset from day one, we've been able to be a really positive mindset team. Um, people will, they just shut up. If they don't have anything nice to say, they kind of have seen this is how we do things and they just, we don't engage. I make sure obviously if there are issues, they can come right to me. I don't care who you are, come straight to me. I don't care if you go to your market mentor or whoever your upline is, come to me and I'll take care of it myself. So let's go back through the notes here. Oh, and the last thing I wanted to tell you guys, as far as being a leader among leaders, and this is something I say to my kids all the time, and you guys can nod your heads and agree, because I'm saying it on stage. Don't ever let your own words be used against you. When you are in a leadership position, you have a choice. You have to go high every single time. And I tell everyone on my team, you can screenshot any message I send, you can screenshot any text, you can screenshot anything and plaster it anywhere and my words will never, ever be used against me. And that is how we keep drama on the low down, down low, and ex, you know, non-existent on our team. Don't ever, ever, as a leader, let your words be used against you in any way, shape, or form. That's probably my number one tip to keep a drama-free team. The last thing I wanna say, oh, I went over time. The last thing I wanna say, actually, this was not written out, but I thought this was too good to not share. I'm so excited, did John already leave? Okay, so my time hop popped up from this day last year, and I started shaking, getting a little emotional in my seat, and I'm going to tell you guys why. It's a memory from this day last year, and this is what it says. Tonight I put Maddox in the tub and found a success magazine sitting on the bathroom sink. I don't know how it got there, how long it's been there, where it came from, no mailing address, nada. Come to find out, I think it came in my product pack. For no real reason, I open it up, just killing time, while sunbeams and unicorns and rainbows fell out. The articles in this magazine are more than priceless for any business owner or any adult. So I had to share just one excerpt from one article that stood out. My view is that you get up every day and aim to be a little better than you were yesterday. You figure out what you're naturally good at, then focus on building those strengths and don't fuss about the things you're mediocre at. You work hard, try to be a person of generous spirit, and make your success about shining your light on the people around you, not yourself. You do your best to develop enough likability in yourself that you'll have people around you who are pulling for you instead of trying to pull you down. And when things get rough, as they always do, you have the courage to stand firm and then keep standing firm. This was from Personal Laws for Success by John Addison. <laughs> So that popped up in my time hop while we were sitting here hearing him speak on stage and I thought, God, if God does not just keep reminding me over and over and over again that we are in the right place at the exact right time with the right people and like he said, it's those small things that happen little by little that you look back and realize are the big things that, you know, why are we are where we are and that was just, I mean, could not be any, I was like, that is what's going at the end of my, at the end right here. John Addison quote. All right, that is it, you guys. I hope that that helped. Thank you.